would you say there's any moments within your career where you've helped that movement towards mental health by being that open and honest? I think for me, it's, it's much more about just, just talking to, to people. And again, you don't have to do it in a big room. You can, and that's what I found really thing. It's, it's reaching out to people. When I was going through tough losses and stuff, what really made a big impact on me is your friends and your family are brilliant. Yeah but they don't understand what it's really like to go through it because they don't know what it's like to be written in papers and spoken about on social media and blogs and all that kind of stuff. And as much as you try and avoid it, you feel hurt, you feel shame, that burden, all that kind of stuff. But it's when like other international captains reached out to me and I don't say too much, but they know what it's like. So it's now when a younger player does go through that, it's reaching out to them and just say, look, I'm here. But then it's, it's down to them to say, yeah, let's go for a coffee or, or something. And, yeah. and that's at the time I wasn't good at, I, I accepted it, but I probably didn't reach out and say, yeah, you know what, let's go for a coffee because everyone wants to help. And that's the other stage where I'm so much better for now. Is there any moments when you look back on your career that are defining to you that might not have been public? You've got your accolades that we've listed, but within the sport itself, are there any moments that you hold close to your chest? You know what, I, th I think a lot of the moments are... The ones that people don't really see, of course, everyone sees the wins come the end of the season. But a lot of the time, and I'd always speak to the team at the beginning of the season about how everything adds up. Everything adds up. So it could be a points different, it could be a thing, but come the end of a 22 game season, it could be one try or one try conceded that makes a difference for you going into the top four and potentially winning the silverware. So I always think, like in pre season and stuff, it's, it's almost breaking down together. It's almost suffering together that brings you closer. Um, and it's, it's hard it's hard to really explain, but I think as a team, if you can suffer, then once you get on a team, you know what it is to suffer in those type of environments. So once you come through it and you win a game, you go to a place, not a glamorous place, but you might win 8-10. No one will remember that game, but come the end of the season, that game is so important. So I think it's always more than a little bit. Of course, the big games that everyone knows about and sees and, yeah. and stuff are brilliant. And don't get me wrong, I, I won them. Yeah. But again, it's the little things that add up which make a big difference, I think. Have you got that one moment? Do I have one moment? That uh, was a defining point for you. I would say, for me, a lot, a lot changed in 2012. I got left out of the 2011 World Cup. Uh, I was in a training squad, didn't quite make it. Came back to Harlequins, we won something like 10 to 12 games on the bounce. It was a, a record at the time, it was brilliant. I got then got made England captain and in that season we won the Premiership. So for me, it wasn't one moment, but I'd say it was one season. That season really elevated me to, to that position and was one I always look back with fond memories and say, you know what, that, that was brilliant. Now you spent the majority of your life in the back row. From the outside, and especially at the moment in the press, there's a lot of awareness around head injuries and the management of that. Looking at the sport now, do you think it's got a future? Yeah, look, I, I do. Um, and if we're being honest, it's, it's a really tough time for rugby. Not only the concussion piece, which, which is coming out, but you look at numerous clubs which have fallen away, the Irish, the Wasps, the Worcester. The World Cup's going to be brilliant. And I think we definitely need that to pick our sport back up. But look, concussion is a serious thing. And I think with any contact sport, it's, it could happen. And what I think a lot of concussion as well, the players who have suffered are the players who played majority a little while ago who said, you know what? Oh, you've got a head knock, get back out there, toughen up. How are you feeling? You're fine, yeah. You know what, as a player, as an athlete, you always say you're fine. No matter yeah. what, I've, I've, I've had broken hands and I've had things where I said, yeah, I'm fine, I'll get out there and play because you want to play, you want to be part of it. What has changed is the protocol that's put in place. So now if there is concussion, you can be scouted by an independent doctor. So if he thinks you have symptoms where you might wobble, you might show something, he can pull you off. He doesn't have to prove anything else. And then you have to pass through certain tests to come back onto the field. You have 10 minutes to try and do that. But then in the week, you have to do memory tests, you have to do balance tests, you have to do training tests. It's not easy to pass to get back up. So you have a baseline in the beginning of the season, then you're compared to that. I think the sport is doing all they can to not just prevent it, but also kind of help players if and when concussions do happen. Because they will, they will continue yeah. to happen, unfortunately. But I think also they've tried to change things in the amateur game as well. They went from here tackling down to here. And I think obviously they've now brought it back up to the sternum, which is the right call. But I think, yeah, but they have to look at things because we want our game to see. And look, unfortunately, like I said, I've just taken my little boy to rugby for the first time. And look, I, I'm not concerned. But I have friends who have said, oh, are you going to take him to play rugby? Similar age kids. And they said, no. 
which again, for me, is really worrying. It is a problem for sure, especially if parents now are visiting who played a lot of rugby as kids. I think, you know what, I'll put them into football or tennis or anything else. You've had your fair share of injuries along the way throughout your career. You mentioned your son playing two and a half years old. Would you have worry or concern for his welfare if he was to choose the same career path? No, I wouldn't. And maybe that's because I, I have been in the sport and I have had a lot of injuries in my body. And maybe I don't view them the same as a lot yeah. of other people, regular people would, would view injuries and stuff. I've broken my, my foot twice. I've broken my leg. I've done my knee ligaments, done my knee ligaments again. Just scared my shoulder three times. I've just scared my AC labrums, hands, bulging this in the back. That's a fairly long list. Fairly long list. I reckon, I, I reckon I can level up to you well, on that. Well, you probably can, maybe, yeah. maybe not quite, maybe not quite. But but that's a, but concussion that's a is a, a huge worry in our sport as well. And again, the protocols have changed significantly. Hmm. But what I wonder is genuinely out of curiosity, because there is so much hunger to play, to be out on the field from an athlete perspective, are we likely to see athletes sort of cheating the system? Because you could make out that your base level is slightly different at the start of the season. So you do have that that window. Yeah, look, there, there's, all, there's always that and there's always people looking. I think though now players know that there is a threat. So most, yeah. most players are pretty sensible. They're of aware course. of it. Yeah, exactly. So you want to make sure you've got the, the right thing in place because Yes, you want to play, but your health and safety is so much more important. Whatever sport you play, no matter, no matter what it is, if you're going to push your body under, under duress, there's a chance your, your muscles could tweak or, or anything like that. So, no, look, I, I hope my, my kids are sporty. Um, I, like I said, I love sport. And yeah. unfortunately, some things do occur as, as a consequence. So, no, of course, you, you don't have injuries upon anyone, but... Unfortunately, most professional athletes have injuries at some point in their careers. Yeah, it's all, all part and parcel of it. We had, uh, there was one phrase that was banded around within our sport, which hit me and actually affected my decision to continue in, in the latter age. Because it changes when you get older. You do, yeah, it does, yeah. You do get scared. And that was, you will get injured. It's not a matter of if, yeah. it's when. That's pretty heavy, but that's the role you take on. And it doesn't matter what sport you do. You can get injured playing golf. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, think, look, I think also what we're lucky with in sport, you you have the top surgeons in the country, in the world and stuff who can generally fix you up and stuff, which is the, the other side Put of it. Put you back together, a little bit of glue. Ex exactly. <laughs> and actually, a lot of the stuff I've had fixed feels better than my other side now. Go on. Um, That's good to hear. You don't hear many people saying that. I mean, no. you have run a marathon post-career, post-rugby. Yeah, I That's... won't be doing that again. My knees are pretty sore <laughs> after that. It's right. We'll, we'll go to the bike. We'll yeah. go to the bike. What's your relationship like with Monday, start of the week. Now you're not in camp playing rugby. In all honesty, it depends what I'm doing in the week. My week varies so much. I have my three fixed days and then stuff around that can vary. With the World Cup going on, I'm going down to France quite a lot for kind of corporate commitments or TV work. So it's just being flexible and very open. Yeah. And I just have to be quite quite on it with my admin. Yeah. Quite on it to make sure I know what I'm going to do and, and where and when I'm going to do it. I'm liking your application to admin. You seem very organised. I love I do. I, do you have a diary? I have a, a phone diary. I have a written diary at home as well. Yeah, I tend to uh, tend to be on it. So you've got a little paper diary. You've got all of the, all of yeah, the diaries we've, going Yeah, on. we've got a big diary at home that we can write stuff on. But I, I think with that, it's more about who's picking our son up for nurseries and all that kind of stuff. It is so important, I think, for clarity as well now, for myself not being on that programme as such to just know where you're at so you can utilise and make the most of every single day. You know? Well, ex exactly. And I think also what's important with that, I can work out when I'm going to work out around that. And lastly, Chris, we like to ask all of our guests if they have any life mottos or quotes that they can share with our listeners. Life mottos and quotes. Um, it could be something from your rugby days or something that you live by now. Yeah, I mean, I heard, I heard some. Obviously, balance is very key. Um, and I used to tell a lot of young guys when they first would come into the Harlequins that I want to set up and say, and I, it was a brilliant, what are you doing when no one's watching? Because when you get to pre season, when you get to the summer, it's easy to train well, it's easy to eat the right food, it's easy to do extras and stuff like that. But in January, when it's wet and cold and your shoulder sore and you've lost two games on the bounce, are you still doing your extras? Are you still eating the right food? 
are you still in an ice bath for 10 minutes when everyone's gone home? So I guarantee you the people who go that extra way are the ones that can continue to push themselves mentally by themselves. Of course, you need help from others, but you've got to be your biggest driver, I think.